Hello, everyone. I'm Kai Lin, and I'm a principal in the investment team at Color Capital, based in Hong Kong. Let me start by thanking you for making the time to join us for our Barometer webinar. I'm joined today by one of our colleagues, Karen Zeff, who is also an investment principal based in Hong Kong. Together, we will present the results of our latest barometer. Throughout the session, you will have the opportunity to submit questions. You can do this by using the Ask a Question button, and we can follow up with you with responses. Color Capital's Global Private Equity Barometer is a unique snapshot of worldwide trends in private markets. It's a twice a year overview of the plans and opinions of institutional investors based in North America, Europe, and Asia Pacific. This 38th edition of the barometer captured the views of 110 private equity investors from around the world. They were surveyed over a period between the 13th of February and 31st of March. 2023. Its findings are globally representative of the LP population by location, type of organization, total AUM, and length of private equity investing experience. The results show that despite uncertain times, investors are positive on the current vintages of private equity and are being selective on the strategies and sectors they invest in. First, a bit of background. The survey questions were answered by LPs in uncertain times, with inflation at levels not seen in recent decades, leading to a cost of living crisis. To combat inflation, central banks are increasing interest rates. In addition, world leaders continue to face significant challenges in their domestic agendas and tensions between the world's major powers remain high, with severe economic difficulties apparent in several countries. GPs are struggling with difficult active markets, with an impact to LPs' liquidity levels. As LPs assess the risk and opportunities of the current environment, reshaping investment approaches and portfolios will be a priority for many of them. With that background in mind, let's turn to the findings, starting with the current private equity vintage years. Despite a difficult macro environment, the majority of LPs are positive on the outlook for the current private equity vintage years 2023 and 2024. Three-fifths of LPs believe that 2023 will be a strong vintage year for North American private equity. More LPs are positive on the outlook for 2024, with more than 70% saying it will be a strong year and almost no LPs expecting it to be weaker. Half of LPs expect a stronger outcome for European PE in 2023, with more LPs being positive on the outlook for 2024. The results aren't surprising given history points to transactions made during a downturn or a recession tend to outperform over time. There's a slightly different picture for Asian private equity, where less than half of the LPs believe 2024 will be a stronger vintage year. The region hasn't suffered the same issues with high inflation and interest rates seen in Europe and North America although Asia was slower to recover from the pandemic. A higher number of Asia-Pacific LPs are taking a positive view on their own region, with 70% of respondents expecting a stronger vintage in 2024. In their sector allocations, LPs are showing a preference for less cyclical sectors with 87% of LPs saying that healthcare and pharmaceuticals are attractive sectors for private equity investments over the next two years. Three quarters of LPs say IT and business services look attractive, compared to just one fifth of LPs that think the consumer sector is an attractive opportunity 
for private equity investment. LP's views on renewable and hydrocarbon energy vary considerably. With 69% and 49% of LPs viewing these sectors as attractive, respectively. We also asked the LPs for their views on strategies, and there has been a big shift since we last asked the question five years ago, with large and mega buyouts falling out of favor. Over four fifths of LPs say they expect to see good investment opportunities for GPs in mid markets lower mid-market buyouts, and special situation funds in the next two years. A similar result to when we last asked the question. We added secondaries to the question this time, given the growth in that strategy. And three quarters of LPs expect good opportunities to arise in secondaries. Significantly fewer LPs see attractive opportunities for large and mega buyouts. As we've mentioned, we're in a rising interest rate environment in the West, which has led to some issues with debt financing. The chart here shows the fall in debt issuance in 2022 and the start of 2023. LPs have concerns over debt, with more than half of the LPs saying that the current proportion of debt in buyout deals is too high and only 4% of LPs think the level is too low. This could be one reason for large and mega buyouts falling out of favor. One strategy that has proven popular with LPs and since several GPs adopting is buy and build. This chart shows the proportion of add-on as share of the buyout count rising over the years. And the strategy is delivering for investors with 64% of LPs reporting that their buy and build investments have outperformed their organically focused investments. Hardly any LPs reported that their buy and build investments had underperformed their organic growth investments. And here's where investors think private equity deals will come from in terms of sellers. More than 60% of LPs expect families, entrepreneurs, and corporations via disposals and spin-offs to provide the most attractive investment opportunities for private equity transactions in the next two years. Few LPs see good private equity investment opportunities coming from businesses in administration. I now hand over to Karen to present the rest of the findings. Thank you, Kai, and hello, everyone. As we saw earlier in the presentation, investors believe there are attractive investment opportunities for GPs in the secondaries market. And it's a market which is growing. We expect secondaries volume to reach $140 billion in 2023 and have a long-term estimate for the market to reach $500 billion by 2030. Here are the reasons investors are selling in the secondaries market. Most LPs will use the secondaries market to rebalance their private equity portfolios and also to increase liquidity. Since we last asked LPs for their reasons to sell in the winter 2020 to 21 barometer, far fewer LPs are using the secondary market to lock in returns or refocus their portfolios on the best performing managers. Next, we turn to LPs' plans for their alternative target allocations. At the end of last year, in the winter barometer, we reported that fewer LPs were planning to increase their target allocations to alternatives and private equity than previously, mainly due to a denominator effect. Six months on, and the summer barometer reports that things seem to have stabilized for LPs. LPs' plans for private equity are holding steady, with over a quarter of LPs planning to increase their allocations. Over two-fifths of LPs plan to increase their target allocations 
to private credit and infrastructure over the next 12 months. A slight increase from the winter 2022 to 23 barometer. Showing the popularity of these asset classes. The private credit market has grown rapidly over the years. According to Prequent, private credit had assets under management of $1.5 trillion held in fund structures alone in 2022. And the next couple of years is expected to see further growth, with the private credit market set to reach an AUM of nearly $2 trillion in 2024. With this in mind, we asked LPs for their views on the long-term outlook for private credit. 64% of LPs expect the shape of private debt markets to change over the next three to five years, with a greater concentration of capital within larger GPs, following how the private equity market developed in its earlier years. The remainder of LPs expect a greater dispersion of capital amongst a larger number of GPs. We also asked LPs about their long-term plans for their private equity managers and compare the answers to when we last asked the question five years ago. The number of LPs expecting to increase the size of their PE commitment to individual GPs has halved since the winter 2017 to 18 barometer. One quarter of LPs expect to decrease their average commitment size. 29% of LPs expect to increase the number of GPs they are invested with over the next three years. And the same number of LPs expect to decrease their portfolio GPs. This is a slight change in balance since last reported in the winter 2017 to 18 barometer. Despite the mixed results on PE commitments and the numbers of managers, investors are finding space for new managers in their portfolios. 80% of LPs expect to make their first commitment to a new private equity manager in the next one to two years. And over half of LPs expect to do the same to new managers in private credit and venture capital. We also focus on which aspects of the fund investment process LPs find challenging. 62% of LPs said the negotiation of terms was a challenge for their institution during the process of investing in a GP's fund. Suggesting that the balance of power between LPs and GPs has not shifted much. Around one third of LPs found manager assessment and identification a challenge. And only a fifth of LPs were concerned about fund access. There are a couple of findings in the barometer that point to investors becoming more active. The first, being their activity around due diligence. More European LPs have increased their levels of due diligence compared to global peers over the last two years. 72% of European LPs report they have increased the level of due diligence they undertake on potential fund investments compared to two years ago whereas less than half of North American LPs have increased their level of due diligence on new investments. However, their views are split on the importance of incentives when committing to a first close. Just over half of LPs think the provision of incentives, such as an early bird discount, are important to their institution when making the decision to commit to a fund's first close, and 44% of LPs say incentives are not important, possibly due to them not having the cash currently to benefit from such discounts. 
One sign of LPs becoming more active is their willingness to travel. 80% of LPs expect their due diligence related travel to return to pre COVID levels. And two thirds of LPs expect to travel more in the next 12 months for conferences and AGMs. By contrast, only half of LPs expect to travel more frequently to their own office. The last few months has seen interest in artificial intelligence. In particular, ChatGPT increased exponentially. This question was asked before recent headlines on the topic, and already investors were seeing the usefulness of using AI in the PE transaction process. Three quarters of LPs think that AI will be an important tool when originating private equity transactions in the next five years. Three fifths of LPs believe that AI will make a significant contribution during the deal assessment and post-deal portfolio company engagement stages. Next, we turn to ESG, a topic we have followed in the barometer for many years. This year, we focus on the hiring of dedicated ESG professionals. And as in the past, there is a regional split between Europe and North America. Three quarters of European LPs already have dedicated personnel responsible for ESG within their institutions. Conversely, three quarters of North American LPs say they have no plans to appoint dedicated ESG professionals. Asia Pacific LPs sit somewhere in the middle. Over the past few years, there has been an increase in anti-ESG rhetoric in the United States. Within private equity, this has taken the form of some commentators saying that managers should purely focus on delivering performance to the exclusion of any ESG elements to their investment philosophy and or processes. The majority of LPs, however, do not expect the anti-ESG movement in the U.S. to impact the importance of ESG in the PE market. Only 4% of LPs expect this movement will result in GPs deprioritizing the importance of ESG within the private equity market, with the majority of LPs not expecting GPs to change the emphasis they place on ESG. We next have a couple of findings where investors are recognizing the challenges in the economy and markets. This chart shows a lower level of capital being called in 2022, with only a slight increase on the amount called in 2020. Looking forward, around two fifths of LPs expect their GPs to draw down less money in the next two years compared to the amount drawn in the last two years. Only around one-fifth of LPs expect their GPs to draw down more money. LPs are also recognizing challenges in the venture capital market, where valuation have been falling, and the majority of LPs forecasting down rounds in the venture capital portfolios. Three quarters of LPs are expecting more down rounds in their venture capital portfolios in the next 12 months compared to last year. The number of North American LPs expecting this is much higher at 85% of respondents. Lastly, we end on an optimistic note when reviewing the actual net performance LPs portfolios have achieved since their inception. In last winter's barometer, we asked LPs about their expectation for performance, and they were optimistic. With one third of LPs forecasting net annual returns from their private equity portfolios of over 16% in the next three to five years. With uncertainty in markets, 
we thought that the number may have lowered by the time of the summer barometer. However, the proportion of LPs reporting returns at this level has stayed at record highs, with 39% of LPs reporting net annual returns of over 16% across the lifetime of their private equity portfolios. That concludes our findings. In this barometer, investors are telling us Investors expect strong vintage years for PE in 2023 and 2024. Healthcare and pharma are attractive sectors for LPs, along with mid-market buyout funds. LPs see a role for AI in originating private equity transactions. And the proportion of LPs with net annual returns of over 16% across their PE portfolio stay at record levels. The Barometer is a publication of the Collar Research Institute. You can find more information about our reports on the Collar Capital website. There is also an option to subscribe to our research for future publications. Alternatively, reach out to any member of the Collar team and we will arrange to send you a copy. That concludes our presentation. For those of you that have submitted questions, we'll follow up shortly. Thank you very much for watching.